So we're at our sample wall where we've asked the builder and the mason to lay up some sample panels so that we can make a decision on what type of mortar joint we want, what sort of mortar color we want to confirm the selection of the brick that we've already made. And you can see here that the joint has a line struck in it. So the mortar has been pressed back in. Pressing the mortar in seals up the joint and then this small groove is put in there. This is called a grapevine joint and it's one of the more decorative ways to strike mortar. Now because we have a white based brick, we wanted to have a white mortar. And the mortar normally would have an orangish sand. In this case we bought a white sand. Let's go take a look at that. All right, here we've got a pile of standard construction sand. And you can see that it's tan, orangish. It's relatively clean. There is some dust in it, but not a lot. This would give you a uh, sort of a grayish colored mortar. And that's what we use for the block work on this particular project in any place that doesn't show. But we wanted to have this white mortar with a white uh, face brick. So we couldn't use sand like this or we'd have a terrible contrast. So at an added expense, we bought this white sand. That when mixed with the mortar gives you a very nice white finished product. And the whole wall will be more unitized as, uh, as a white surface that we're after. You'll still see each individual brick but the, uh, the overall look will be uh, what we're after. So this comes at an added cost, but in many cases it's worth it. So we spend money for a nice brick, we spend extra for the white sand to mix in with our mortar, and then we lay up the wall, and if we don't do something about the mud at the bottom, every time it rains we're gonna get this splattering effect you see here on our sample wall. This is of no consequence here because it is our sample wall. We have a first-rate builder on this project, Huntley Design Build, out of Southern Pines, North Carolina. And to keep from having a splattering effect like that, he's laid down straw at the bottom of the wall. So when the rain hits that, the mud stays on the ground, it doesn't splash up on the brick. If it did splash up on the brick, it's extremely hard to clean off. And if you try to power wash it too much, you end up taking the white frosting off of the bricks. So a precaution like this is essential. If you're doing a, a brick house of any type, I'd advise you to make sure your builder is using uh, some protection like a bed of straw around the base of the, of the wall.